Alrighty folks, today's strategy is the early Poland strategy. Now if you've seen my previous Germany setup videos, you'll know why I went down naval rearmament and we can talk more about that on that video. When you get your first 50 political power, you can begin justifying for war and you could do the early Poland war. Now. You could do this for any uh, country. I have another video planned for the Dutch. I have others planned for other countries. But why Poland? By getting Poland early, you can do several important things. One, you can be a little uh, more selective in when you go to war with the Allies, unless Italy forces your hand. And also, you might be able to avoid war with Russia for a while, or flip that around, you might be able to avoid war with the Allies and deal with Russia first. The other thing this is going to get you is all of Poland's industry, which admittedly isn't too terribly much in 1936, but any industry is good industry. If you're going to do the early Poland strategy, there's a couple different ways to do that. The one way is to try and crush them as quickly as possible. And the other way is to try and milk them for experience points. The way I'm going to do it is just the speed run through. If you're trying to speed run through Poland, what you're going to want to do is put your strongest troops probably actually here in this area. But right now the supply situation isn't that great. So we're going to leave them on this front while we are building the lighter infantry unit that we're going to use to push from this side. Now, another thing that's worth noting, you'll see these units are not at full strength yet, and they certainly won't be if my priority is going to be churning out newer units. Uh, and those newer units are going to be deployed before they are full as well. That's okay, because Poland is pretty weak, and you can still push them back with that situation. And while we wait for the army to build, we could also try to figure out what to do with our more mobile panzer units. There are two schools of thought here. One of those would be having them come from both sides and try to pincer and cut off some troops from the capital. Another idea might be to have them both coming down from the south and cutting the country in half. Now, it could go either way. I'm going to try the pincer this time. Since we're going for the speed run on Poland, once we get the interwar artillery researched, we're going to hop on over to get the mortars researched. Now that the Spanish Civil War has begun, one other way to try and milk some experience out of this, regardless of uh, what strategy you're using for Germany, uh, is always to go in here and try to send some air volunteers. Uh, why am I not sending land volunteers? Well, since I'm doing an early war strategy, those land volunteers, by the time they get there, are only going to have a couple of months before they get pulled back again. Not going to have a lot of time to really do much, uh, unless you're really micromanaging them, and I don't want to do that. Plus, it's a waste of equipment that I haven't even produced yet. I'm short on everything. Uh, so by sending the air volunteers, I can get some air experience. They are immediately sent. They are immediately recalled with no delay, and so they can be used in this uh, conflict as well as the Poland War. So I always have some air force ready to go, just so that I can get them over here. You know, already just a couple days in, we've got air experience from the planes we have in the war. One of the benefits of the early war strategy, regardless of whether it's Poland that you're going after or not, is that you can bypass the Rhineland focus once you have already completed um, the war declaration that gives you um, basically 70 days worth of focus you don't have to do uh, which is what bought me my earlier naval rearmament or you could focus on something else like moving down this tree faster here for the industry all right with about a month until the war begins i'm going to start planning the actual battle so i'm going to take my good infantry and i'm going to move them up to this area i'm going to take my lighter and poorer trained infantry and get them over here. Why did I switch those around? Well, the good infantry coming down from this area are going to be able to have more concentrated power along this shorter front line. And additionally, they are going to have a shorter route to get to Warsaw here. They might push back a couple of these weaker units, which would give them, as the AI, a chance to kind of move more troops forward, further cutting them off 
uh, from Warsaw. So the best guys are going to come down and they're going to focus on essentially cutting the country in half. And our weaker troops are going to focus mostly on making sure they reach Warsaw. Our tanks are already here on their spearhead orders to try and do the pincer move. And so between these and the aerial battles, we should be able to get through this in a couple of months. Alrighty, we're a day away from the war, and already we have over a hundred air experience just from our small little group of planes that's been fighting in Spain. So we can go ahead and grab an air doctrine to assist in our attack. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my navy is not training out in the middle of the ocean in the middle of a war. And I'm going to go ahead also and green light all of my armies. Oh, forgot to give him his promotion. Green light all of my armies ahead of the war so that the moment the war is declared, they're already moving. And here we go, 10 a.m. and war begins. So let's see how long this takes from 10 a.m. October 12th. See how it goes. All along the front we are attacking, we're pushing through most places pretty easily. The mortars got done just after the war, so that's good. And already the tanks pushing through those pincers coming to fruition. Time to do a little micromanaging on the tanks. The military timetable calls for the rushing up of troops for more blitz attacks. The German strategy is to isolate Polish forces as quickly as possible. So the Nazi columns move according to prearranged schedule. 30 to 37 miles elements. per day is the German claim. All right, so the enemy breaks out a little bit over here because the front lines aren't painted very well. We can fix that. Well, it wasn't quite the speed run I would have uh, wanted, but this is where things get a little complicated for you. If you know you're going to take the molotov Ribbentrop Pact eventually, it doesn't matter um, kind of how much of this that you take. If you don't want to do that, you might want to create some satellite states uh, along the border so that there is a little buffer between you and Russia. Um, but really, what I'm going to do is simply take the entire thing. When it comes to garrisoning Poland, you don't want to keep it at civilian oversight or at infantry division. So let's go ahead and make sure that, uh, oops, not cavalry, garrison, that's what we want. We have it as garrison, and I tend to, as Germany, just default everything over to military governor, because you can drop them individually to lower settings. Uh, now you might think this is the end. Well, it's just the beginning. Where your campaign goes from here is what's most important when you're determining these kinds of early war strategies. So what are you trying to do? Are you trying to go after Russia? Well, then you're probably not going to want to go for your Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact because then you're giving up territory. Are you going to want to go after the Allies in the same time frame, 1939? Well, if you're doing that, you might need to start thinking about how you're going to get through Netherlands and Belgium. Are you going to use the focus tree for that? Or are you going to use a regular justification like we did on Poland and save your focuses for something else? Or are you going to sit here and wait for Italy to make the first move? They'll either uh, wind up attacking Yugoslavia or Greece in order to start things off around 1940, 1941. So what you're planning on doing with the rest of your war is going to determine what you do next. But a good rule of thumb, if you're going to be the early Poland strategy for Germany, is to remember one massive problem that you're going to have. Unlike the early Dutch strategy, which gets you lots and lots of oil and rubber, you have none of either of those things. And now you have a massive country with huge industrial potential, and you need to do something with it. Synthetic refineries are going to be necessary to get you your resources. Uh, when you should be building them, how many you should be building them, 
that's going to depend on quite a lot of factors that really only you can answer for yourself because it's based on what you're building you're going to be building different things in different amounts than i'm building even i'm not too happy with what i'm building right now additionally you have to start thinking about what you're going to do in terms of expanding your military now you'll notice I already had the mod that allows for free template design, which is why I have different templates than uh, the base game would at the beginning. But even if you didn't have that, at the end of this war, you would have significant army experience, which would allow you to start diversifying your military and creating new units. So this is a great war to do early game if you do not use the free army experience uh, for division editing mod because that gets you plenty of experience to start tailoring your divisions to what you want them to look like. And you didn't have to train, because training is just a waste of equipment. You might be thinking to yourself, well, yeah, so is war. I just burnt a lot of equipment. But you got not just the experience that you got from training, but also all of this extra industry that you're going to be able to use. Also, when the war is over, don't forget that you can return your navy to training, and you can also send more troops into spain by going into spain with both the air and the ground this time you'll be able to send three or four divisions on the ground plenty of planes in the air you're going to get yourself at least another hundred air experience and considerably more army experience which is going to let you not only create some new division templates but also at this point you're also going to want to start designing a new tank either by upgrading the existing panzer ii or by creating a brand new design when you unlock the medium tanks, if that's the way that you want to play the game. Now the first full campaign playthrough I'm going to do, it might be the early Dutch, it might be the early Poland, it might be something entirely different, I haven't decided yet. But for now, I'm just going to continue with my early war strategies, and next time we will do an early war on a different country, something very uh, odd. I will, I'll show you what I mean when we get there.